And now to an Action News exclusive, a look at the aftermath of the past year's destruction in Monterey County, resulting from last year's Soberani's wildfire, as well as this winter's flooding. We saw the greatest damage, I think, in and around Big Sur and the Big Sur coast. Uh, a Central Coast photographer, as we've shown you, has spent the past nine months very carefully documenting all of the destruction, its impact on people, and the recovery. He, of course, is photographer Michael Troutman of Carmel, and tonight he is opening an extensive e exhibition in Monterey, which, in addition to documenting the destruction, also will raise money for recovery efforts. Action News reporter Caitlin Conrad is live at the opening. She's got a closer look for us right now. Caitlin? Good evening, Dan Aaron. We're here at East Village tonight where the walls are lined with photographs taken during the Sobranes fire, many of them captured in one of the hardest hit areas, Palo Colorado Canyon. It's been a struggle for a lot of people. Midcoast Fire Chief Cheryl Getz remembers the day the Sobranes fire started like it was yesterday. She was out of town when the calls came in. Her canyon was on fire. And I said, should I come home or should I not come home? What are you trying to say? And he said, I'd come home. And I said, when? And he said, like three hours ago. Flames from an illegal campfire in Sobranes Canyon had sparked the disaster, and it moved fast into the Palo Colorado Canyon community. And we got here to find that the fire had more than jumped, and it had spread itself all the way along, and it had jumped over into Garapata Canyon at that point. So it had gone from very small to we knew it was going to be very bad. It was the beginning of a saga that still hasn't seen its final chapter. The fire burned 132,000 acres, destroyed 57 homes, and took the life of one man. Getz was there for it all, and it fell on her shoulders to bring homeowners in and show them what was lost. I know that when you lose your home, it's like losing a family member. It's losing part of you. And I couldn't imagine these people waking up and finding out that their home was gone because it's on the front page of a newspaper somewhere. Among the firefighters and first responders were journalists and photographers taking pictures of their sheer destruction in some of the hardest hit areas. One of those photographers was Michael Troutman. We joined him in March for a trip into the burn scar. My wife and I were both heavily involved with uh, this fire. Uh, she, she really dedicated herself to the relief efforts um, with food. And of course, I poured myself into this project. It just organically happened for me. And uh, I think everyone uh, in our, the greater communities here uh, at large, uh, everyone wanted to do whatever they could. And so many people have done so much uh, to help. Troutman has taken the photographs and started an exhibit at East Village Coffee in Monterey. The sales will raise money for the Big Sur Land Trust and Big Sur Relief. <laughs> Almost a year later, there is still much work to be done at Palo Colorado and in other areas of Big Sur. After the fire came the rains. 2017 brought storms that caused the mountains to move into the ocean, closing down Highway 1 in places and leaving those up Palo Colorado trapped for weeks at a time. We just moved from one disaster right into, in a sense, another disaster because of the Pfeiffer Bridge and the landslides. And, and, and interestingly, the impact of that is on, affects a lot more people and their basic livelihoods. Spring has brought signs of life to the burn scar, but Get says beneath the flora and the fauna, the soil is still fragile. And this winter has shown her what can happen when Mother Nature gives a one-two punch. The road system in the canyon is in bad shape. And on the private access roads, hundreds of thousands of dollars are still needed for repairs. She says they are not out of the woods yet, but the hardy residents continue to take the hits in stride. You know, we keep trying to get everybody to stay positive. We tell everybody it could be worse, and it could be. To date, the Community Foundation for Monterey County has been able to hand out $1.1 million in grants, but people in Big Sur are still suffering, and there's still funding needed for the recovery effort, which makes events like the one tonight 
very important. Dan, Aaron. Uh, Caitlin, set the scene for us a little bit. I know the exhibit is just, I don't know if it started or if it's just about ready to start. Um, what's happening right now? Well, they opened up the doors around 5 o'clock, and then at 6 o'clock they had a ceremony. Um, they talked about how these images were captured and who all has been involved in helping Troutman get access to the fire. They then did a ribbon cutting, um, and there's a handful of people here. There's a lot of people from the Big Sur Land Trust. There's people here from the Community Foundation from Monterey County. And then there's a lot of people here who are looking to buy photographs, and they range in price from 95 to $695. And the proceeds are going to be split between the Community Foundation and the Big Sur Land Trust. Aaron. All right, All right, sounds good. Good stuff. Thank you, Caitlin. And coming up on Action News at 11, we'll continue our coverage on the aftermath of the Soberani's fire, talking with the Big Sur Land Trust about damage sustained on the land and what you can do to help with that. Also on our website, you can find a slideshow with a few of the hundreds of photographs that Michael Troutman took before and after the fire. You just go to KSBW.com.